The SMU Mustangs are off to a high flying start in 2013. SMU is 3 and 1, hoping to build up some non conference W's before American Athletic Conference play begins. The Lions of Arkansas Pine Bluff represent the SWAC. The Lions are 2 and 2. They'll play an exciting, aggressive style of basketball in hopes of pulling off an upset. College basketball is coming up next. So very important. We know Pine Bluff's going to be aggressive, and SMU just feasts on keeping teams to low shooting percentages. Well, this isn't your dad zone with the Pine Bluff Golden Lions. They attack, they go for steals. They average a steal on 14.5% of possessions. That's good for ninth in the country. And then typical of the SMU and Larry Brown's coach teams, they play in your face. Man, they've held the last nine out of 13 teams under 40%. They are doing exceptionally well on the defensive front. Yeah, certainly they have been fantastic as far as defense is concerned. We'll see what the Mustangs have in store for the Arkansas Pine Bluff Lions today. Our tip coming up next. Back at the Colwell Center. The Golden Lions from Arkansas Pine Bluff and the SMU Mustangs just about ready to tip this one off. And Stephen, let's look at your keys to today's game. Well, yeah, it's going to be very important for the Pine Bluff Golden Lions to defensive rebound. SMU gets 39% of all available rebounds, good for 46 in the country, so they need to protect the glass. And then turnovers are big. Pine Bluff averages 18.5 turnovers a game. That's third worst in the country. You can't turn it over and win on the road. And for SMU, three-point defense. The Golden Lions shoot 41% from behind the arc and 38% of their points from the three, which is 16th in the country. That's the only way they know how to play. You got to protect that arc and control the pace. 
the Golden Lions are small. They know the only way they can win this game is to make it a track meet. They have to control the pace and get it to the bigs of SMU where they have the advantage. Boy, it's been feast or famine as far as the Lions are concerned from a scheduling standpoint. They've defeated Tuskegee and Morehouse. They got hammered at Oklahoma State. A close loss, though, against Air Force the last time out. They were within striking distance in the last minute of the game. Yeah, they were leading by nine at the half. They played exceptionally well. I, I just think the altitude and their inability to make some crucial stops towards the end really hurt them. But it was somewhat of a confidence booster for the Golden Lions, and they're going to try to use that confidence in this game today against the Mustangs. See Mustangs huddling up with Larry Brown, their Hall of Fame coach. Mustangs 3-1, and one, their loss came at Arkansas. And maybe there was a learning curve as far as figuring out what it takes to win in tough environments such as that. You're absolutely right, Brett. You look at the way Arkansas played. They were on fire from three. They made eight for 14 from three in the first half. And it really showed the Mustangs that they have to make defending the three-point line a priority. And they're going to need this tonight against these Golden Lions because the Lions love to shoot the three, and they're pretty good at it as well. All-time series, SMU leads 4-1 to one the last time they played back in 2012. Neutral site in Tulsa, and the Mustangs claim to win, and the Mustangs will have the basketball first. You're going to see a very aggressive zone by the Golden Lions. They love to trap on the corners, create havoc, and look for steals when they get in the passing lane. Mustangs trying to move that basketball around to create the opening. Mustang ball 17 to shoot and you notice they went side to side It's very important for any Larry Brown coach team to try to touch each side three times He says that the more you do that the higher your percentage goes up. That's the way to move a defense Entry pass for Moreira was knocked out of bounds and the Pine Bluff Lions get the first turnover here today You're gonna notice very active hands with the Golden Lions. They love to get to the passing lane, and that was a good example of them reaching and deflecting a, a pass of the Mustangs. There's Daniel Broughton, and he'll provide the first points. The Pine Bluff native averaging four a game. Starts you know, the scoring. And that's huge for the Golden Lions. They really haven't got a lot of production out of him this year, averaging only 5.5 points. To go against the bigs of SMU, he's going to need to produce tonight. We see the Golden Lions moving their feet, hands up, trying to create some havoc. But there's Barrera to the baseline and the flushes. Wow. Johnny Barrera with a nice selfie poster <laughs> on the Golden Lions. Get out the way. Boy, he was a foot and a half above the rim. An exciting way to start the scoring for the Mustangs here in our first minute. There's Tevin Hammond. One of their leading scores, but his path was cut off by Manuel. SMU doing a good job of being aggressive in fronting the post. Hammond's miss was rebounded by Nick Moore, and the Mustangs look to run. There's Manuel, and the pass led him to fall. Now Coach Brand wants SMU to be aggressive in fast break, but one thing he does hate is a turnover like that. That will make a coach livid. We hate to give away possessions early in the game against a team where maybe you hope to, to build that big advantage. Brighton provided the first field goal, and he'll miss on that one to round it out. And that's a rebound grab by Williams. And that's one thing the bigs at SMU have to get used to. Everybody, with the exception of two players for the Golden Lions, will step out and shoot the three. Near steal. And you're really witnessing the active hands. Arkansas Pine Bluff doing a good job of not only getting out into the passing lanes, but coming back into the paint, deflecting and making it difficult to get it to the bigs at SMU. Quick double team off the inbounds pass. It leads to a turnover. Giovanni Robinson was stripped by Moore. Nice job there in the turnover. Yeah, Nick Moore did not give up on that play. Got back in good defensive position. Got his hands in there and knocked the ball away. Good defense from your defensive leader. Let's see what the Mustangs can do against this zone in this possession. There's Marrera again, but he was bumped and fouled. One thing about Pine Bluff, they are not very deep in the bigs. Broughton's going to need to do a good job of playing defense with his feet and not his hands because they need him man in the middle. Really, that's the emphasis, though, this entire year, isn't it, Stephen? Move your feet. Uh, don't reach. Uh, don't make those silly fouls. And that was really a, an easy call for the officials to put two hands on them. Anytime they do that, that's an immediate foul. 
Russell couldn't get it to go, but the ball was followed in by Keith Frazier, who just checked into the game. And that was an emphasis for Coach Ivory of Pine Bluff. Mustangs get 39% of all available offensive rebounds, good for 46 in the country. They are a beast on the glass. You got to put a body on somebody. So three minutes in, just a handful of field goals as these teams feel each other out near turnover, but the ball remains Lions ball with 13 to shoot. Athletic play from Williams to knock that ball over near his Hall of Fame coach, Larry Brown. Giovanni Robinson pulls the trigger on a three, and a couple of those shots have been all but down and popped out. Yeah, Robinson's only taken one shot this year that isn't a three, so you know on the scouting report you got to close him out, run him off the lane, and not let him get set beyond the arc. Meanwhile, Marrera likes those high percentage shots. He just lays that in softly a second field goal. And, and really, SMU's going to need to just keep milking that until the Golden Lions stop it. Marrera is just too big, too athletic, too rangy down on the block for anyone from the Golden Lions to deal with. Well, Robinson pulls the trigger on another three, this time a make. Well, I'm with you, Stephen. Why not just keep feeding Marrera, see if they can get that entry pass to him. He's going to create a lot of havoc if he can get that ball in the low blocks. And that's really what good teams do. They find a weakness, and they just keep attacking it until you stop it. The Golden Lions have not shown the ability to stop it thus far in the game. Skip pass. Moore has to go up high to save. And that time a turnover to Pine Bluff. Brings us to the first media timeout, kind of a slow beginning. But Larry Brown's Mustangs lead the Lions 6-5. to five. One point lead for the Mustangs, and Stephen, our storylines have lived up to the building through the first couple of minutes. The Lions looking for any available three point shot with Coach Greg Ivory. Meanwhile, SMU's had to work against this zone to try and create good looks. Yeah, you can tell it's really been a defensive struggle early on. Neither team able to really get a rhythm, even though SMU has found a weakness inside, able to get Yannick Morea going pretty early. Let's see if they're able to continue that or if the Golden Lions were able to come up with some of this timeout. CSMU forcing Pine Bluff to use up quite a bit of shot clock. I'm sure they'd like to get a quicker shot. Hammond into the lane. That leads to a kick out. Haynes had the open shot. He'll take the tough one from a shorter range and connect. Good no call by the officials on that penetration. I like the ability of Haynes to accept and embrace that contact and go up strong to make that nice floater in the lane. Troy, Michigan native, provides his first basket after having 13 the other day in that close loss against Air Force. Nick Moore will pull the trigger. Boy, they've had a couple of shots just spin around and fall down, Hammond the pull. Hammond got up with nowhere to go, but Haynes lets a three-pointer go. And even though Haynes missed that, that's an acceptable shot for Coach Ivory. He wants to push the pace, get this into a track meet, make SMU play uncomfortable. Well, you see the Lions, those hands up in the deflections, which they love to get. 
Leads to a, maybe a run out from Mosley, and he'll power one in. Did not draw the foul, but it gets the field goal. And see, that's what you want to do for the Golden Lions. You want to try to score before SMU is able to set up their defense. And Marrera tried to answer quickly, and he was fouled. If that's on Broughton, that'll be his second. Instead, it went to Devin Haynes. That's his first. And you see Marcel Mosley doing a good job initiating contact, going up strong through the contact to make that fast break transition bucket. Surprised he didn't get the foul on that? That's one of those 50-50 calls. And actually, I appreciate the fact that they held their whistle on that instance because that was really incidental contact. Marrera to the free throw line. There's a good look at Coach Greg Ivory. First season, 2008-2009. Meanwhile, Larry Brown trying to build a program back here at SMU. Marrera splits a pair. That's five points for the 6'11 junior college transfer. So Pine Bluff with the lead in the basketball. SNU doing a good job of forcing the offense of Pine Bluff outside of the three-point line. But there you see Marcel Mosley able to dart, create some seams, and get it to the big man Broughton down low for an easy deuce. Broughton had that high screen, rolled to the basket, got the easy look. Couple of field goals for him. It's a four-point lead for the Golden Lions. There's Marrera again, strong move into the lane. Lost that ball briefly, but then he drew the contact to the foul. Looked like he was trying to find the handle as he went up with that hook shot. Well, Brown, you have to do the work before Morea gets the ball. You let him post up way too low down on the block. Once he gets it that low, it's pretty much easy. He's feasting on you, able to go to his right over his left shoulder for a nice little jump hook. Really was nothing left for Brown to do but foul Morea. He just went to the free throw line. He'll head back. We would imagine he may get a number of opportunities at the stripe today with his height advantage. Number one junior college player in the country last year. His team at South Plains went 36-0. They won the national championship. He averaged almost 19 points. It was another nice recruiting coup for the Mustangs to continue to build this program as you see Haynes check out. Well, one thing about Coach Larry Brown is he's always been dominant inside, and he's always shown the ability to develop big men. So Unique, unique Morera made a good choice of going to a team that is going to get him the ball and develop him as a post as well as a perimeter player. He's provided six early points, six of the seven for SMU. The Lions, though, still have the advantage. Broughton has been a big factor early over Marrera, and Broughton, who averages just four a game, has six points. Yeah, this is the best that Broughton has played all season long. You can tell that that early bucket for him really gave him some confidence, and he's riding it right now. He's a player that you could term as fearless. He yep. got involved into a little scrape with Marcus Smart at Oklahoma State. They had to go to the monitor to make sure he didn't get a flagrant one, but he wasn't giving up any ground. Well, Marcus Smart is a player that I don't think anyone wants to get into a scrape with. Another whistle, more free throws coming though for the Mustangs. Jalen Floyd picked up his first. We've had four fouls in this game, all have been charged against Arkansas Pine Bluff, so more free throws for Marrera. He's hit two of four, and you see Coach George Ivory up Maybe asking for some explanations. He's going to have to play a number of guys if this foul issue continues. He really has, and that really puts the emphasis on depth uh, with the new rules and their implementation. Uh, but looking at Yanni Morera on the free throw line, as a team, they only shoot around 61% from the free throw. That's bottom 20 in the country. That's really the most glaring weakness for this SMU team. Once you start getting in conference, you start going down to the wire, that can really come back and bite you. Well, it's a great point, Stephen. Certainly, we know the conference games will be so much more difficult. UConn, Louisville, you can go down the list and the American. But you pointed out their shooting percentage at 61%. You compare that to what opponents do to them at a 73 and a half. It's, it's a big disparity. Yeah. Those are basically turnovers, lost possessions. When you go to the free throw line, you get one out of two. You're negating really the opportunity to score the most efficient way on the basketball court. Tingle into the game, one of the ball, the low blocks. So you see the quick hands of Nick Moore. Yeah, Nick well, Moore was fouled a couple of times and finally drew the personal from Mosley once he got in the front court. 
Yeah, when Tingle gets that ball down low, you, you got to be strong with it. You got to know that Nick Moore is coming from the weak side. Great anticipation, and then Nick Moore does what he does best. He attacks in the front court going downhill, and that's a player you got to make go east to west. When he's able to go north and south, he is too much to stop. He looked like a running back looking for a first down between contact, between tacklers. Yes, he did. Cannon cutting him into the game and into the scorebook with a short jumper in the paint. And see, for me, that's one of the pluses of SMU is the fact that they have those four returning starters, a player like Cunningham who can come in, average about 33 minutes last year, averaging only about 16 this year. And this is a guy that appreciates every minute on the court and knows how to play what Larry Brown wants this team to play. That's a good point. Different roles this year for players who had bigger minutes last season. Marcel Mosley, not bashful. That was from NBA range. And the rebound to Floyd leads to another three-point try. Tingle on the low blocks. Again had the ball swatted away. Frazier led to the steal. And see, that's the thing that SMU doesn't do particularly well, and that's defensive rebound. One of the things that Coach Ivy talked about during shoot-around this morning, they want to get to that offensive glass and get those second-chance scoring opportunities. Frazier missed, and then you saw the foul from Marcus Kennedy on the push-off. So Coach Ivory, his team off to a good start. It's a 13-12 Arkansas Pine Bluff lead here at the Colwell Center in Garland. Arkansas Pine Bluff with a one-point lead. They've connected on one three-pointer, tried several. Mustangs still trying to get their first from long range. Yeah, and, and that's really smart basketball by SMU. They, they're only 0 for 3, but they are basically dominating in the paint, shooting 57%, uh, particularly Unique Morera doing a good job of, of getting wide down low and scoring, as well as knocking down shots from the charity stripe. But they need to keep milking that, go to their bigs, because the Golden Lions really don't have anything to stop that down low. Well, Tevin Hammond has been quiet. He's a player averaging 12 a game, not been in the scorebook yet. And there's a simple turnover from Jalen Floyd as he threw one into the seats. And that's a, a huge problem for Arkansas Pine Bluff. They average 18.5 turnovers a game. That puts them in the bottom 20 of the country. And you're basically giving away shot opportunities where you don't even get something up at the rim. Is that a matter of going too fast? It's just being careless with the basketball. Something Coach Ivory is working at, but they have to knock that down, get it down to at least 15, 14, particularly when you're on the road. Cannon Cunningham's provided a couple of field goals off the bench and puts the Mustangs back up a point. And I really like Cannon Cunningham. He can stroke it from 15 foot. Nice moves in the block over each, each shoulder. He's going to play big for the Mustangs once they get in the conference play. Sean Tingle trying to work his way in. Strong move and an easy lay in. And right when I say that, of course, Cunningham gives up a, a layup to, to Tingle. So the Lions back up a point. They're back in their zone defense. We'll see if the Mustangs can get a good shot off. Nick Moore's also been quiet today. There on the baseline is Marcus Kennedy. The Lions able to save to Hammond. See if Tevin Hammond can get a shot off, maybe get him involved offensively. 
You know, one thing about Tevin Hammond is he does dominate the shots for Pine Bluff, but he's not very efficient. He shoots about 34% of all their shots, but he's not scoring, only shooting about 28% from the field. They need to kind of spread the wealth a little bit amongst the other players. Kind of a wild runner from Robinson. Rebound by the Mustangs might lead to an easy shot. Cannon cutting him with the gift to Marcus Kennedy in the basket and a foul. Boy, Cunningham had an easy look if he wanted it. Pass to a teammate, leads to a three-point play opportunity. Good teams go from a good shot to a, a better shot. Cunningham with a nice touch bounce pass to Marcus Kennedy, and that's great teamwork right there. You can see the unselfishness of Cannon Cunningham, and that's one of the things I like about him. Not worried about the stats, worried about the overall production of his team. That would seem to be a term that would be something the kids would understand go from a good shot but find a better shot yeah, you would think that but <laughs> sometimes the me time gets old I'm trying to break it down in simple terms time. for him you know what right. I mean candidate the miss but the Mustangs keep the basketball leading by a point so a chance for maybe four or five points in this possession there's cutting him again good passer good ball movement Nick Moore finally an open shot and he gets his first two points of the afternoon and, and see that's really one thing I like about Nick Moore is even though he's a leading scorer he really tries to facilitate first, and when he sees the moment for him to step up and make a shot, he does that. But SMU doing a great job of ball movement, getting open looks. Certainly are. Led to a four-point possession, but a foul on the other end. Marcus Kennedy picked up his first foul. That's just the second on the Mustangs in more than 10 minutes of action at Wilson. Devin Haynes to the free throw line. You just saw a nice take by Devin Haynes going to his right jumping into the contact to create a chance from the free throw line. Haynes with three points. He's not been a very good free throw shooter this year. 14 of 25. You see Robinson take a seat. Haynes a 6-8 forward out of Detroit, Michigan. Good ball game here in the early goings. Competitive back and forth. We've gone with lead changes. Mustangs with the ball, leading by a point. You know, I really haven't seen that signature Golden Lion defense. Ryan Manuel, the backdoor cut in the alley-oop. And that's one thing that you have to know when you play against SMU. They love to utilize the backdoor lob. Little false motion on the strong side to Ryan Manuel. One through five, they are athletes for the Mustangs, and they all can go up and, and snatch those out of the air. That's what makes it fun to watch, right, when they get it, a click. It really in. does. It really does. Devon Haynes will pass to Broughton. He's been an early factor today, and he steps out and reigns in the three, just his third of those this year. But Broughton has nine points for the Lions. Well, it's not like he doesn't have it in his DNA. Out of high school, he was a top five product out of Arkansas, local kid, as you mentioned earlier. They're going to need more production from the backcourt of Pine Bluff and some better defense to get back into this game. Well, Cannon Cunningham followed his miss with the tip, and that's six early points for the young man off the bench from Arlington. Devon Haynes controls for the Lions, guarded closely by Sterling Brown. A little too much ball pounding by Pine Bluff. They need to work this man-to-man -man defense by moving the ball side to side, much like SMU is doing on the opposite end. DeAndre McIntyre picked up that foul and a move to the basket. The one thing the Mustangs probably realize by now, the Lions aren't afraid to drive and crash to the basket. It may not always look pretty, but you have to be ready for them to shoot at any time. You're right, because it, as I mentioned earlier, with the exception of two players for the Golden Lions, they, they can shoot from three, and they have license to shoot from three. There's Hammond, his first points. The young man from Little Rock averages 12 a game and very low field goal percentage, as you mentioned, Stephen, but a high percentage shot for his first two. Well, that's what a lot of shooters or really players in general need to do. And there you see the anticipation by Tevin Hammonds. Averages three steals a game. You cannot just lazily throw a pass out there. He will intercept it every time. Well, Coach Ivory wanted a foul up off the bench. He probably had a beef, did not get one. So the turnover, the steal, doesn't lead to points. Marcus Kennedy to Cannon Cunningham and another foul going against the Lions. So already SMU in the bonus and they'll be that way. The remaining 747 of our first half.
Good ball game tied at 22. The Mustangs, though, have been able to show off some athleticism. Watch this alley-oop and the backdoor cut and the flush. Good ball game. Larry Brown's Mustangs in the Arkansas Pine Bluff Lions tied to 22. And Stephen, you look at SMU shooting 64% from the field. Why is their lead, or why aren't they leading by a few points rather than being tied with the Lions? Well, it's because of that, the negator that you have in college basketball, that three point line. And Arkansas Pine Bluff is doing a good job of creating open looks from the three point line, but also being effective when they choose their spots inside the paint. And this is basically the game plan that Coach Ivory had coming in. Try to make some shots from distance and then pick your poison down along the rim. Cannon Cuttingham just went to the line and knocked in two. So the man who averages four points, he's had eight. So Cuttingham stepped up, providing points for the Mustangs. Well, Daniel Broughton has added nine for the Lions. A couple of guys far beyond their season averages already. Devon Haynes on his move to the baskets. Picked up the foul on Nick Russell. And Take another the, look. They're not fronting Devon Haynes, and whenever he's able to get that basketball down low like that, you see Cannon Cunningham got caught a little flat-footed. Haynes felt him on his body and pivoted into the lane, weak side. And Haynes is a player that, once he gets it going on, can score in bunches, averaging double figures. Last year, he led the SWAC in offensive rebounds, so he's a guy that can get stuff done, a little undersized as a big man, but he's able to use that for his benefit. I've got to believe there's players like Haynes that come out of the SWAC that are good ball players. They look at games like this against SMU, maybe against Oklahoma State. as really an opportunity to measure themselves and try and shine against the bigger conferences. Well, it really is, and a, a lot of times, they play their whole pre-conference schedules against those bigger Division I teams, and for the most part, sometimes they come in on the losing end of that. But this is a team in Pine Bluff that believes that they can win every game out, and they're really playing with some confidence right now. SMU trying to get that good shot against the zone defense, but another turnover. Tevin Hammond, the steal for the Lions. On the run out, Hammond from behind was bumped, but no foul called. Haynes will rebound the miss and score. And that was really perfect execution. You had numbers. Hammonds realized that, went up for the shot, even though he didn't score it. You had your offensive rebounds in place, got that second chance scoring opportunity, made a nice bucket. Another steal by Hammond. He's starting to jump into those passing lanes. Got up in the air with no place to go, but the Lions maintain possession. Three steals for Haynes. There's a steal back by Manuel, and a whistle going against the Golden Lions and Tevin Hammond. So they've not been able to fully capitalize on some of his steals. And I'm sure Coach Larry Brown is just shaking his head thinking, guys, we, we told you about this guy. He, he anticipates passes. He jumps in the passing lane. And you're just witnessing right now, he just got a great feel on where SMU wants to go with the ball. And he's feasting on their passes. 
Must feel like there's six lines out there instead of five on a few of those occasions when that defense is working. Manuel misses the free throw and the Lions have it back. Well, Tevin Hammonds was a defensive back in high school and you can see that mentality and mindset with him. He's an aggressive physical guard that just wants to get in there and make plays on the defensive end for his team. DeAndre McIntyre controlling, going one on three, and his shot was swatted away by Marrera. Lions maintain possession. The shot clock for one of the few times today inside 10. Hammond needs to hurry. Steal by Brown ahead to Marrera. Oh, goodness, he hit the basket support hard. He was trying to set himself for a sports center type dunk. We're going to see nice steal, nice fast break. And Sterling Brown passes it up to Unique Marrera, where he could have easily gone in for a layup himself. I like the sharing of SMU basketball right now, taking advantage of their fast break scoring opportunities. Marrera will have his seventh and eighth free throw opportunities of this first half already. Well, he is one of the better free throw shooters for SMU, and one of the problems they have with their poor free throw shooting is, is that two out of the three of the guys that shoot the most free throws are poor free throw shooters. But in this game, Unique Marrera is doing a good job stepping up, knocking them down. That will jump your free throw numbers down a bit early on if those big guys that get a lot of opportunities can't knock them in. Marrera, though, knocks them both in here. He has 10 points. Nick Russell, in for Sterling Brown. Nick Russell back in for the Mustangs, replacing Sterling Brown as Larry Brown has been active trying to Played 9 10 guys here in this first half. One thing talking to Eric Snow, who's on the coaching staff, said that Coach Brown doesn't really have a rotation yet. And right now he's struggling, just trying to find good matchups, good rotations, players that play well together. A good opportunity for some of these young guys to get some and earn some minutes. McIntyre can't get that shot to go. Got an inside source, right? You and Eric Snow play together in the NBA? Yeah, we played a little bit. Driving to the basket is Nick Moore. Well, he went from end to end in a split second for a second field goal. Pine Bluff is led by as many as five. Right now, it's the Mustangs by four. There's Trent Whitting. Really, Broughton and Haynes have provided most of the scoring. That ball swatted away by Marrera off the window. Russell's going to challenge everybody down the floor, and he gets the roll. Nick Russell went one on four, but he gets the basket. And that's the best type of offense when it's spurred on by your defense. And when you have Unique Marrera down there manning the rim, it allows it easy and early runouts, and SMU's taking advantage of those. Well, he's going to do that a few times this year. Swat a few of those shots, lead to some runouts on the other end. Nearly a basket from Devon Haynes. He spun one around and it dropped out. Well, SMU only allows teams to shoot 35% inside the rim. That's second in the country, and you see why right there with Unique Marrera manning the rim, doing a great job of protecting the rim, and then Nick Russell doing the rest, taking it coast to coast, scoring from your defense, creating your offense. Russell was going to take on all comers, beating everybody to the other end. At that point, <laughs> Russell only saw the rim, and he was going to attack it. Here's Ben Moore back in. Ben Moore coming off a 13-point game against Rhode Island. He had 19 points against Arkansas, trying to lead a comeback. So he's provided them some minutes. He really has. He was very productive the first three games. Had a little bit of a hiccup last game. Didn't play well. And I, I'm sure Coach Brown, in waiting a little bit to get him off the bench, is trying to let him realize, as a freshman, you have to bring it every game. You cannot take any possessions off. Well, he brings it there and scores his first two today. And I got to believe that's something that's tough for those young kids to learn. You have to go through it a few times before you realize the, the energy that's required every single day. You really do. And, and you saw that last bucket by Ben Moore, and that shows you that he is back on his game because of the three out of four games, normally when he gets in, he immediately does something positive, able to do something very quickly on that possession. See if the Mustangs can run off a Lions miss. Moore will push the tempo again. Good ball movement. There's Frazier. He's not bashful. And the floor rebound comes down to McIntyre. And there you see those careless passes by P Pine Bluff. You want to push it. You want to push the envelope, but you don't want to throw the ball away. Defense, 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 defense. 
Mosley will not get the roll, but he'll have free throws forthcoming. And that shot was a little bit forced by, by Mosley. The defense by SMU was basically set, and he just ran right into the, the defensive man. Fans in Garland enjoying some college basketball on a Sunday afternoon. It's the Mustangs by six. Young and old alike, having a good time. The band's playing on a cold, sleeting Sunday afternoon here in the Metroplex. Gold Lions got off to a good start. They led by as many as five, but now it's SMU by six, and we're starting to see the Mustangs jump in those passing lanes and cause some problems for Pine Bluff. Yeah, they really are, and more importantly, though, doing a good job of taking what the Pine Bluff Golden Lions defense is giving them, and that's the inside, shooting a very efficient 12 for 18, 67% inside the paint. And that's something they're just going to need to continue to milk until the Golden Lions can try to stop it. Marcel Mosley, his first free throw opportunity today. He had 18 points against Tuskegee in a win, 16 against Air Force in that loss. Real good free throw shooter, though, is Mosley. He's only missed one time this year. You see the fans from Pine Bluff join their team playing well today. Pine Bluff trying to go full court, more so to try to disrupt the timing and the rhythm of SMU. And the one thing about going full court, you encourage them to push, maybe leading to some easy baskets or free throws. We've seen that. The way their defense is played in that 2-3, I almost like to see them fall back and just try and jump in those passing lanes. Yeah, but that's not the way they play. They're an aggressive. Their identity is aggressive on the defensive end. But what really what they're trying to do in that full court press is get guys that don't normally take those early shot clock shots to take shots that they're not accustomed to taking. Right there, SMU, though, did a good job getting it to Ben Moore, who got to the charity strike. You talked me into it. <laughs> exactly. I'll go with that formula. Important sequence, though, in this last three minutes for Pine Bluff going into the break. Really, Broughton got going early, and that helped the Golden Lions weather the storm early. They don't really have a big post presence when Broughton is on the bench. He's been on the bench for a few minutes, and now the Lions searching for shots. Mosley will try and invent one from long range. He's done that twice today. Fights for his own rebound. His feed to Floyd would have been good for a basket, but he fumbled it. So back come the Mustangs. Again, SMU doing a good job taking their time, swinging the ball side to side, waiting for the defense of Pine Bluff to really open up and show the scene that they're going to attack. That's some low post position for Sean Williams. And that's the way Sean Williams operates. He's a below the rim player that uses angles. And you saw him pinning Marcus Haynes down on the block, going up strong with really an easy left hand hook. Well, pushed his defender almost completely into the basket. Another one swatted away. That's Ben Moore being active. 
Marcel Mosley got a shot blocked by two SMU players. Frazier had the open three. He'll take a shorter jumper and get the friendly roll for Keith Frazier. And the Lions and Coach George Ivory want to call a timeout. The lead up to nine for the Mustangs. And, and those are really the runs that for Pine Bluff going lines that you can't have when you're on the road. They're really going through a low right now where they're not getting any defensive stops. And SMU is able to take advantage of their defense, getting easy looks on the offensive side. And when you're on the road, you can't allow teams to sustain no, those type of offensive runs. Especially after they put together a pretty good first half. They don't want to see it slip away in these last two minutes and give the Mustangs a chance to really jump up a big lead before the break. Well, this is similar to what happened against Air Force. They came out playing exceptionally well, and then they just have these lows on the offense and the defensive side, and, and they're learning that you're going to have to play consistent, particularly against these better Division I teams, because they're not going to allow you to come into their house and, and go into those long runs. You saw Daniel Broughton check back in just a moment ago. Nine points to lead the scoring, and there's Broughton handling the basketball. And that's one thing Arkansas Pine Bluff does exceptionally well, and that's the high-low game. Larry Brown worked on that with their team for at least 20 minutes yesterday in practice. Pine Bluff in danger of a turnover, and you see the Lions called a timeout to keep the possession with a buck 46 to play here in the half. Let's go, Yeah, right now, Coach Ivory, wants to score a couple baskets, get a couple stops. You want to carry some momentum into halftime. You're already under 10 points, but you want to knock it, get it close to five points and try to get some of that momentum that you had back in the first five minutes. I've seen a lot of one-on-one -on -one type offense, though, from the Lions here in these last few positions, really trying to create and, and maybe make shots as opposed to moving the ball around and, and looking for a better shot. Well, that's really the identity of the Golden Lions that they want to take you off the bounce and try to attack the seams. But what you're seeing from the Mustangs is their ability to stay in front of the offensive player and, and really create contact without fouling and, and really contest all those two point shots. And Pine Bluff really hadn't found the answer for that, which is going to be reversing sides. Like you mentioned, let the ball touch multiple hands. You've summed up really what a lot of teams are trying to do. Contact without fouling, cut off passing lanes, provide, provide or play good defense, yes, and not send teams to the free throw line. I think sometimes you might want to talk to the official like, hey, I might touch him. I'm not going to foul him. <laughs> Just work with me. Another whistle. A double foul is called. SMU. Double foul was called. That is his first. T. Howell, number seven. And I think the officials right now are trying to tighten up this game. A little jawing going on between Devin Haynes and the bench of SMU on that last time out. Not wanting to let this game get out of hand. So the Lions could really use a hit. I'm not sure that's what they had in mind from long range from Hammond. And Frazier the rebound. So the young phenom freshman Frazier, a couple of field goals, and now we'll see what the Mustangs will do without Moore leading the offense. Another near steal. Frazier able to collect. The ability to, for Pine Bluff to get to those passes is giving them a confidence, though, that they're going to be able to take to the second half. Sean Williams with the field goal, so the lead continues to grow for the Mustangs, their biggest lead of 11. I'd like them to go down on the block to Broughton. He's got the height and size advantage against Sean Williams. They need to try to take advantage of that. He was trying to get to the basket, but not before another turnover. There's Marcel mostly checking in for Pine Bluff. These are going to be some extremely important possessions for the Golden Lions. You don't want SMU to get above 10 points and, and go we really run away with this already at 11, but you don't want to stretch and get farther. So Larry Brown will call a timeout. Maybe drop something for what could be his final possession here in the first half. We've really seen Larry Brown and the Mustangs play several players here in the first half. You mentioned Ben Moore late getting into the game. We saw some other guys that had opportunities to play. Keith Frazier's played a lot here in the last seven or eight minutes of this first half. Well, that's one of the things I like about SMU. They have seven players that are, are scoring seven plus points on the team with only Nick Moore scoring in double figures. 
So they have a lot of capable guys on that bench, a lot of guys that can come in and give you productive minutes. And, and so on any given night, you can have a different player stepping up. Do you think their scoring will start to center around three or four players as they get deeper into the season? Or is this a team that throughout the year can have this type of, of, of depth and talent from a scoring standpoint? I think you're going to have a team that's going to have some depth. I, I do believe you're going to have Unique Marrera who's going to start scoring double figures. He's too important for this team. But you're going to have some guys, two or three guys, are going to be around eight points, and that's going to be a big bonus for SMU. Sean Williams nearly lost the basketball a couple of different times, and he'll burn a timeout. So each team has called two timeouts here in the last two minutes of the first half. Each team also trying to save a possession or maybe a turnover. Well, and that's really the havoc that when the defense of the Golden Lions is working co correctly, that, that they create. And right now you're just seeing them, particularly in the corner. Coaches always teach you never go into the corner. The baseline acts as a third and fourth defender. You want to keep it away from that, stay in the middle of the court. If you do that, the Golden Lions are going to trap you every single time. And we've seen some height as well from the Mustangs here in the last five minutes where maybe Pine Bluff has jumped in that passing lane. They've had a double team. They've tipped the ball, but the Mustang player has been a little bit taller, maybe quicker, been able to grab that deflection and then continue on with the possession. We we'll see Nick Moore is on the bench, and he is the leader of the Mustangs, and so they're really kind of taking advantage of, of the lack of a definitive leader for the Mustangs late in this game. Frazier bumped near the timeline, nothing called. But a six-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock here in our first half. Nick Russell, the Duncanville, Texas native, Kansas State transfer. They're probably going to wait till about five seconds left in the shot clock to get something going and go for a shot. Easy look for Williams, and he's made all three field goal attempts, six points. That, that's way too easy, Brett. Late in the shot clock, you can't let Sean Williams basically shoot unhindered from the free throw line. Robinson from long range will rein in the three-pointer. Giovanni Robinson gives the Lions a bit of a boost after the Mustangs really controlled in the last seven, eight minutes of the half. Really, Brett, that's a huge shot for the Golden Lions. Now they're able to go in the halftime with some momentum. You basically have it to 10, which is perfect for the coach. And you're going to see right now, nice shot. They moved the ball from side to side and got the shot that they wanted. So SMU was starting to pull away. They had a 13-point lead until Giovanni Robinson able to rein in a three at the buzzer to make it a 10-point game at the half. 41-31, SMU with the advantage. Forty-one, thirty-one lead for SMU at the half. Again, I'm Brett Dolden with Stephen Howard back inside the Colwell Center here in Garland, Texas. Pine Bluff really played well for the first ten or fifteen minutes, Stephen, and it was Broughton who provided them some points where maybe he hasn't been scoring them in recent games. He really hasn't. Only averaging 
little under five points a game, but he was able to get a feel early. And with bigs, it's good to go inside early. That developed your confidence, able to do a nice pick and roll and get the point. And then a nice step back jump shot, which really showed the confidence by Broughton, a guy that normally operates around the rim, able to uh, operate around the rim, but some three pointers as well during this basketball game in the first half. Well, he gave them a nice boost. Then he spent several minutes seated at the end of the first half, and that allowed SMU to get involved. Meanwhile, Yannick Marrera, we saw a little bit of everything from him, certainly rebounding a lot of free throw opportunities, some block shots at the end, really showcasing his entire game. Well, he averaged nearly a double-double in college, and he was showing some of that skill set that he used to be the number one recruit out of junior college with a nice facial attacking the rim, using that athleticism and range, and then really sealing down low, creating a big passing target for his teammates and really going up strong. That's what Unique Marrera needs to do, but on the defensive end is really where he put the exclamation point on his first half performance, doing his job and protecting the rim. Considering his size advantage over the Pine Bluff Lions, do you expect him to be an even bigger force going forward in the second half? I would hope so, and I know the coaches for SMU would hope so as well. When you're that big, when you're that rangy and long, you have to take advantage, and he definitely has a size advantage. Been a big part of the SMU Mustangs 10-point lead over Arkansas Pine Bluff at the half. We're back at the Colwell Center in Garland, Texas, the home away from home for the Mustangs, at least for another month, as the Moody Coliseum is being renovated. We're going to get an update on that and more from Kurt Pockhotter. He is the Senior Associate AD for Development. Thanks for joining us here at the half. Sure, my pleasure. Want to talk about Moody Coliseum, but first let's get an update on your tennis facility and where you're at. Yeah, we're in, uh, in process, in construction. Uh, right now, big hole in the ground. Uh, but uh, we'll have 12 championship courts, six indoor, six outdoor, uh, as well as uh, team rooms, training facilities, coaches' offices. Uh, so it's going to be a great asset for not only our tennis programs, men's and women's, but uh, for the university and, and the community. Well, what an exciting time around the campus and the university. Whenever you see holes in the ground, as you say, or certainly in the Moody Coliseum getting closer to being able to uh, host basketball games, just to see the excitement and, and, and the way things are coming together. Well, and as, as pleased as we are to have this facility uh, to host us in the pre-conference. It's going to be great to get back to 
Moody uh, for our teams and our fans. Uh, and so we're very excited. Uh, January 4th, we'll open up uh, back in Moody for the first time uh, after uh, a $50 million renovation. Uh, and it's going to be great. We're, we're really excited. I was in there about a month ago, uh, and, and the construction has picked up significantly uh, in terms of the pace. And now you can see that the arena has really started to take I'm shape. i to make you speak for everybody in the athletic department. You have to feel like proud parents, don't you, to see the development and, and getting closer now to uh, being able to open things up and, and get those games back inside? Absolutely. And, you know, we're in the midst of a, of a comprehensive capital campaign uh, as far as the university goes. And so the Crum basketball facility, which is home to our men's and women's teams from a from an offices and from a, an administrative and a practice standpoint, uh, was the first building as a part of the campaign. And so now to add Moody on as a competition facility is going to be fantastic and uh, really give our fans something special. So those fans that are curious, I'm sure you get a lot of questions about what it's going to look like and what it's going to feel like. Do you have a, a season ticket holder preview coming up? We do. In fact, uh, December 18th, uh, 7.30 to 9 a.m. Uh, we're going to open up, and it, really the opportunity is for our season ticket holders to come in and get a chance to see their, their uh, perspective in their seat.